Hello everyone, Levi here from OneTech to take you through our video example for our MicroAI Atom for Raspberry Pi APM project explanation. Um, so first I just want to give you a bit of a tour of the repository. Right here you can see we've got our APM project, uh, down below the security project, which will be uh, a different video. We've got these two, we've got some documentation that explains some of the files within the video or some of the files within the projects. This is more pertinent for the security doc for the security project, but I urge you to still take a look all the same. Uh, last but not least, we've got uh, licenses, overviews, and a README. So if I take you through the README now. Uh, we've got a table of contents about the project about Micro AI Atom. So just to give you a quick explanation for what Micro AI Atom is, uh, Micro AI Atom is basically a a uh, an AI solution that lives at endpoint devices that takes in real-time continuous data and calculates basically a one step ahead prediction for the data as well as performs anomaly detection. So uh, what else do we have? This one, this pro these project files and these videos are specifically set up for Raspberry Pi. So we've got some first initial steps for setting up your Raspberry Pi to make it a bit easier to use. Um, we've got some libraries that will need to be installed and pip installed. Uh, and then we've got some very high level explanations of the security project and the APM project. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. The APM project. Uh, so the devices you'll need for the files present, you'll need obviously a Raspberry Pi and all of its, you know, uh, extremities. Uh, so SD card, power cable, things of that supply or that nature. Um, next, you'll also need the SenseHat attachment for the Raspberry Pi. And if you're not familiar with what the SenseHat is, it's basically a hat that plugs into the GPIO pins, and on it, it has temperature, pressure, humidity sensors, as well as accelerometer, gyroscope, and magnetometer, uh, as well as an 8x8 grid of LEDs for outputting messages or whatever you really want to do. Um, they're pretty neat attachments. I would highly recommend getting one. The example files uh, in this project assume you have that SenseAt. Uh, by no means is the SenseAt required for Micro AI Atom, but it does make it awfully convenient. So let's get in. The first step to any AI project is your data acquisition. So we like to refer to this as Xcode. So we'll take a look in the X directory. So you'll see two files. This one is a, a router. And basically what this is is a list of IPs and ports that basically tell the AI where the, the IP of the input data, where the input data will be stored. This is a Redis IP and port, the IP of the AI engine itself, and where the AI engine will store the output, also a Redis IP and port. Um, for the purpose of Atom, MicroAI Atom, all of these IPs are locked to localhost. Um, and because this is the EVK version, we are limited to six channels, so C0 through C5. Um, these C0 through C5 can be named whatever you want. For ease, we've named them this. So what else do we have? This is our actual data acquisition code. So we have a function that reads that route table, basically tells us, uh, you know, which Redis keys to post the data to. And down here we have our SenseHat functions that get the accelerometer and get the gyroscope values and the XYZ coordinates. Finally, we send them to Redis. That's it. So what you'll do, the first step for every every project, every microwave project, will basically just be activating whatever your data input code is, uh, your data acquisition code. So you'll, you'll activate it, leave it on. If you're working directly on the Raspberry Pi, you'll want to open up a new terminal. If you're SSH'd in, you'll need to use a, 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 a service like Tmux to open up new windows. Um, but you'll need this, this program running as well as some others. So now that we have that one running, let's take a look at the AI engine. The AI engine, you'll see two route tables, very similar to the ones we just showed you, so I won't bother clicking in. Uh, then we have root CFG, which is the main configuration file for the AI engine. And there's really only about five of these things you really want to look at. Uh, first one you really want to look at is sampling time. Uh, this is basically a value in milliseconds uh, for how quickly the AI engine runs. Typically we do 1,000 to 2,000, 
it's right now set at 300. Uh, feel free to experiment with what and with different values and see what sort of results you get. Um, next, we have five and six, which are if build model and if execute model. Uh, basically, these are switches that tell you which mode the AI engine is in. You will want to start with if build model on. So you would, you'd want to start with this one with a value of one and execute model with a value of zero. This would, when you activate the AI engine, would train your models, build your models, and then after it's done, you can switch this value to zero, this value to one, and you can execute the AI engine. And you will, uh, it'll begin doing its job. It'll begin doing the one step ahead predictions as well as the anomaly detection. Um, lastly, we've got TDEM and HDEM. TDEM is basically the number of entries it'll take into training. Um, for the purpose of the EVK, this number has been limited to 3,600. It's at 100 now, but it's capped at 3,600. And HDEM is basically how much historical data is considered each time a new entry in the model is created. So this is advised to stay around one-tenth the size of TDEM. Um, but like I said, feel free to experiment. Right. So. After that, you will activate your AI engine, and you will need to pull up another terminal or pull up another window in your SSH, whatever you choose to do. And so we've got acquisition code running, the AI engine itself running, and lastly, we need to build an application. So the application is in the Y code section, or application code as we call it. Um, again, the AI engine router, very, very similar, and we have a basic output. And what this basic output does is, again, reads the router, figures out where the output is being stored. And essentially what we do is we have a method called abnormal ratio, which essentially goes down the list of channels being input. And it compares the real value being sent to the AI engine, the calculated upper and lower bounds, or the calculated uh, acceptable places for that value, and compares them. If they're inside the bounds, it's considered normal. If they're outside of the bounds, it's considered abnormal. So basically, this then takes up all of the abnormal uh, channels, sums them up, creates a ratio. And if that ratio is over 0.15, we say you're experiencing abnormal behavior. This is a fairly arbitrary uh, method, but it's just something to kind of get your head wrapped around the idea of checking the acceptable bounds for the behavior, for the for the data and checking the real value and seeing if it's within the acceptable bounds and then performing actions based off of whether or not you see normal or abnormal uh, relationships. So last thing in the file is the PDF and the PDF covers all of this and a lot more, a lot more detail in this PDF. Um, I really advise you to check it out. Um, so the last thing I want to show you is uh, we have put together a demo. Now the, the, the files in here are for a sense hat demo, something very quick and something very easy for you to put together. But at one tech, we have done essentially the same thing where we've put, we've put uh, sensors on a device and we're going to monitor it. But the device we're using, instead of just the Raspberry Pi itself and just the sense hat, we have sensors connected to a robot. And so we're going to monitor, you know, the sounds the robot's making, the the path the robot is taking, the robotic arm, and we're going to build models based off that and find its normal and abnormal behavior, as well as show you some visualization tools to kind of help better wrap your mind around the upper bounds, the lower bounds, the real values, things of that nature. So let's take a look. All right, so here's the demo we've prepared for you. Um, you can see right here, we are monitoring this robotic arm that has uh, vertical movements mixed with lateral movements. Um, so our data acquisition, or X code, is running over here on the right. You can see these, these channels here are the ones that are being entered as data into microAI. So we've got C0 through C10. So we're using 11 channels. I know the EVK is limited to six. We're using 11 for this specific demo. Up here in the top left is what the microAI uh, engine looks like when it's running. You'll see it's processing data as these uh, dots appear on the screen. And in the bottom left, we have our application code. Now, what our application code is, is just an alarm that pops up at the terminal level whenever uh, abnormal behavior is presented to the robot. So you see the engineer block the robotics arm's path, 
and this generates a bunch of alerts. So basically any deviation from its normal side to side, up and down uh, behavior generates these alerts. Um, so this has been you know, a pretty simple demo monitoring uh, piece of equipment, um, but we're excited to see what you guys come up with. Um, if you have any feedback or questions or concerns, uh, there's two places you can let us know. The first place is in the issues page for the Git, and the second place is at our email, support at onetech.ai. But um, that concludes our presentation for the MicroAI Atom for Raspberry Pi APM demo. I uh, thank you all for listening.